know who they are. I'm Charles, and this is my wife, Jeannie Gibson. And we've uh, been married. We've been married now, 21,977 days today. I knew you was going to do that. That equates. 60 years, years and two, two months, months today. today. <laughs> I was 25 years old, and we were stationed in San Vito de Normandy, Italy, near, near Brindisi, when I became pregnant. And the day that they decided to send me, the plane was going to Libya, so that's, that's the one I caught. When I got up there, they didn't quite know what to do with me, so I just kind of got up and wandered around. And one night I started having uh, an unusual feeling, and the nurse came in and she said, we're having a baby. So we delivered early. What they said was a fine boy. I saw him only for the moment that they put him on my stomach to cut the cord and to assure that he was a boy. Passing out cigars, just high as a kite, you know. I mean, I was really on a, a big thing. But that night, the chaplain, the base commander, and a good friend, Buddy Hooks, came to my house and knocked on the door. And when I saw, I knew there was something wrong. But Buddy, they told me that our son had died. I got to the hospital, and my only concern was my dear wife. I uh, got there, and they told us, said, you know, you're on a flight the next morning. The chaplain had a little service for us the next morning before we caught the flight. And our son was buried in an Italian cemetery in Libya. As the day years go by, you don't think as often. And it wasn't really until 19, uh, 2008, these friends, Buddy and Betty Hooks, he saw in the Air Force Times that the bodies in that cemetery had been repatriated back to the States. Well, our, our life was changed at that time again and grief came back and flooded us. And Claudia Brown shared with us about the walk here at the hospital. And she was expressing how she'd never held him and just the lack of acknowledgement that she had lost an infant at birth. And the pain was so obvious on her face and Charles was sitting there and he was also in pain. And I had done one of the walks already here at the hospital. And so uh, when they, as they were talking and when they finished, I said, you know, we, we do this walk in May and I think it would be great if y'all could participate in that as an acknowledgement of Stanley's life. We didn't know what to do. We just sat and listened, and, and the, the music was great. The people who shared was great, and we really enjoyed it. It was a hard time. So we came back the second year, and that's when we really, for the first time, the released, released the balloons that we were involved with. We not only released the balloon for our son, but also for the miscarried. And it's such a tremendous time of of sharing and heartfelt understanding that there's other people out there just like us that are hurting. And grieving goes on forever. Sometimes it's, you don't think a lot about it, but then sometimes it just rushes in on you and just tears you up completely. It was the neatest thing to hear. Um, 55 years ago, uh, it's just a long time, uh, for the grief to hit even later in life. So through Sheer Hope, we're able to see patients from the first weeks, years, um, even this long term, um, long time ago, 55 years for them. And that's, that's so huge to be able to see how um, grief can just sneak up on you even later on in life. And so those are things that we want to be able to do through our program is to walk this journey uh, through as long as we need to.